Hey, what's happening, guys? Ronan Man here. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about boundaries for men. Um, and another kind of angle on it would be boundary for nice guys. Boundaries for nice guys. Because one of the problems I see online with boundaries in general, boundaries is saying, no, you don't want to do something, right? A lot of the advice comes from the type of people that it's easy for them to say no. They can just say no to anything. And they, they'll just, they can be very socially unacceptable they're very forward. They don't care what you think at all. And <clears throat> that advice is not very helpful, I found, to most men in most situations. Because bravado aside, most situations are complicated. And, you know, you have people you care about, things that you're not sure about, and you're being confronted with something. I'm going to analyze a particular situation in depth. And the reason why I'm going to do that, the reason why I think it's worthwhile, is because... A, life is complicated, like I said, but B, also, what I'm trying to give you is one example, as best I can, that you can take that and learn that and then use the wisdom from that or the kind of understanding of the vibe, the understanding of the, the factors and how it all works out so that when you get in a situation, you'll be able to quickly analyze it. So it's like I'm teaching you one particular, um, let's say, uh, let's say what, what would be an example, like, like uh, how to handle somebody who's aggressive in a bar, for example. And, uh, you know, you learn one good way. A lot of people are scared of that. That's one thing. It's one of one of guys biggest fears. And, you know, if once you learn how to handle it one way or you see it handled well one way. It gives you ideas. <laughs> ideas are dangerous, right? Because now you know, okay, that, not in this situation, but <coughs> let's drink some water. Uh, but I can see the, the pattern. Okay, I can see the factors. And I can generalize from that other specific example. So that's why I beg of you to not always look for short videos because ABC videos... I found with stuff like boundaries, they just don't work. I mean, they just don't, they long-term or, or more likely they cause more trouble than they uh, solve. And because of that, you're not dumb. So you end up not using them, right? Then you're back to square one. So boundaries for men is a great topic. Most videos on the internet are by women, boundaries, you know, or guys kind of parroting whatever they read. You know, people just read one video and copy it, <clears throat> you know. Um, and so the same kind of thing, but I think for men, it's different. So I think that for men, it's very, very important part of being a man is learning how to set boundaries as a man. So we're going to go back to when, uh, this one guy was about 10 years old and we're going to analyze the situation for him because that's the best, your own real situations are the best because you know all the factors, right? You can envision the whole thing. You remember the guy's face, you know? So, but for other guys, uh, like I said, it's, it's a, a very valuable because this is such a great example. So, okay, there's the intro. So let's get into it. So basic situation was there's a guy and uh, he's in his thirties now. And when he was, I don't know what, about 10 years old, he, uh, fourth grade, he uh, got into a, um, he, he was selected for a math team, okay? And uh, then he went to his uh, rabbi, okay, because he was raised in the church, uh, you know, going as a, as, a, as a practicing Jew with his mom. And so his rabbi said a bunch of things trying to talk him out of doing that because that conflicted with Passover. Uh, and so he was, you know, he didn't really talk about what the rabbi said, but he talked about the school counselor. So the school counselor told him, said, you know, uh, son, uh, Sandy Koufax, if you guys don't know, he's a famous pitcher in baseball. If you don't know pitchers, it's the guy who throws the ball hard down to, to the batter. And uh, Sandy Koufax, was, you know, he's one of the greats. And uh, apparently, I don't know if the story is true or not, but it probably is. He said that Sandy Koufax missed the World Series uh, because of Passover or something like that. Something, uh, a religious a holiday that he thought was important and he laid down the law. And uh, this story put a lot of pressure on this young boy. And then he was like, okay, basically I'll quit the team and I'll go do it. Uh, and, uh, you know, interesting enough, it's one of the first things he mentioned 
when we're talking in black label. And that right there tells me something. It tells me that it's something important to him. And why I like this example so much is because it's not important. You know, a lot of times you'll, you'll hear example of boundaries of things that are so obvious to you. You know what I mean? It's just like everybody knows you got to protect your life. Everybody knows you got to not give your password to strangers. Every, you know, it's like all these things that what they're doing with the example is they're trying to overpower you. Like you should do this. You have to do this. This is the way it is, you know. But the thing is, in real life, it's usually not like that. A lot of times <clears throat> having boundaries and being a strong guy, being a man is about a lot of times it's about the small things. And you're like, well, wait a second. How does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense because as you clear up, as you practice with the small things, as you as you deeply analyze yourself and act in ways that solve problems, when you get to the big stuff, you're, you're, you're going to be able to handle it. If you don't practice, if you don't lift weights, you know, how are you going to go and win, you know, obviously, the, you know, the weightlifting competition, you're not because you didn't practice, right? So, and also another thing too is, there's another thing that's very important, is just that small things matter. As dumb as it sounds, it's the dumb things, it's the bees, it's not the tigers that get us. It's just the dumb, the mosquitoes, right? It's like we're just like forever, a lot of people, we, 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 our brains are just not for this kind of stuff. We, we can just go over these things over and over. So if you think in your life of some small thing that keeps coming up in your mind, like you should have said something, you should have done this, that's exactly what I'm talking about. How do you solve that, get done, be done, and never make that mistake again at the same time as being a cool guy? You know what I mean? And you see, these are all opportunities. They're opportunities to show people who you are. And trust me, when you stand up for yourself in a good way, with respect, with self-knowledge, man, you get respect. And I'm going to tell you how to do that here. Okay, so he was selected for the math team. Now, what are the key factors? What I, what I would do, the first thing I would do, the number one thing is I would not answer right away. I would say to the school counselor, because, because he's feeling overwhelmed, obviously, because he made a decision after this. I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm getting confused. Just something doesn't seem right. I would just say, uh, thank you very much. Sandy Koufax obviously was awesome. Uh, really respect what he did there. That's super cool. Let me think about this one. And he'll say, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. Just ignore it. We'll just say, okay, I got to think about this one. Now go off to yourself. Now think about it. Now I'm going to do the thinking on this one. Uh, and I already have done the thinking. What I would say is, A, is that Sandy Koufax, if the story is true, the story might not even be true. But a lot of times it doesn't matter because truisms or, 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 you know, they don't have to be necessarily true to give you a great lesson in life. So I'm not saying, you know, if it's not true, then it doesn't mean anything because the underlying principle is what we're getting at. We're not, it's not a lie detector test on Sony Sandy Koufax or the guy who told the story. Um, but let's, oh, let's look at it. Okay. So why would, and this is where you need time to think about this. Why would, just think about it. Take the time to think about one thing first and solve it. Trust me, this is a very important thing for you to do, even if it's not your problem. Let's look at it. Okay. Uh, Sandy Koufax, he just taken for word it's true. He did a very important thing. He made a statement for his, probably for more than himself, you know, for his people, for a cause. He believed in that cause and he made a huge sacrifice to send a message that this is important. And, and, and you gotta, you gotta say, you know, wow, you know, something like that. It's like, whoa, you know, and, and okay. So he did it. But you got it now. Now what I would say is, what's my situation? Because these examples, sometimes they don't exactly fit. So I'd say, A, I'll try to do this as fast as I can. Sandy Koufax probably had very deep beliefs in, you know, his, his, his God, his religion, how things should be, and his uh, responsibility as a role model. Because Sandy Koufax was 100% a role model to young men. 100%. And it sounds like, especially in that community, he was really respected and looked at. So he's like, nope, not going to do it. Probably, I'm guessing. But for the young guys out there, they learn. If Sandy Koufax can do this, I can do this. Very likely. Don't know for sure, but very likely. Another thing is you know that that's his belief, right? But our protagonist here, 
uh, who wrote this story. The problem was, and he said in his vid- in his uh, email, and later on in the in the uh, audio message, he said it wasn't important. So here's the thing: he wasn't he wasn't sold on religion. He wasn't. He's not now a practicing Jew. He's not doing that. So he went another way, and here he is, a young man, already kind of knowing who he was, right? For good or bad, whatever people think, he decided to go the other way, right? As a boy, okay? Uh, and now, so, he, so he's not Sandy Koufax. He's not a public figure, and he's not, uh, you know what I mean? He's not being leading tons of young guys and has a responsibility and also... If he analyzes his heart, even as a young boy, he might think, you know, once he really gets honest with himself, you know, I don't know, you know, I'm just, I'm not as sold. He could compare himself to other boys. Am I as sold as him? Am I as sold as him? Do I believe it as much as him? You know, that sometimes at that age, it's hard, but he might, if you compare yourself, you might say, you know what? I just get the feeling that other guys believe in this stuff more than I do. I just get that feeling. I'm not sure what's right and wrong or true or false yet, but... I don't know, man. I'm just, I don't know. I'm just not. Okay. So that's the under, that's one of the underlying factors. Another underlying factor is, and this is really important. And this is so interesting is he said it was the first time he was a math team and he didn't consider himself a good student. And he, he said he wasn't a good student and he didn't consider himself smart in school. And he doesn't know how he was picked for the math team. He has no idea. Okay. So that's a funny situation for starters. Like, here he is, you know, this is the thing he's not good at. And he's chosen on the math team, you know, to do competitions, right, for his school. And, you know, the thing is, that is pretty special. When you, you know, if you're, if you're really good at something, right? You know, let's say you go to the famous guy's house and he has a bunch of gold records on the wall. You're probably not too wise to compliment on those. One of the great lessons in how to... how how to make friends and influence people was he goes to the famous guy's house. I can't remember who it was. Instead of, you know, saying his, his, his business prowess, he asked about the chair and he said, Oh, I painted that myself. And it was just a totally average red chair. He had taken an old chair and he had painted red. He was so proud of it. And the old guy, he talked about it. He talked about, it, he gave him the job, you know, boom, everything went well. Right, And because he hit on something that the guy wasn't usually good at, but he tried really hard. And for some reason, that's really important to people. And that's one of the lessons in how to win friends and influence people and how to win yourself as a friend, right? Is understand that things don't have to be important. It's what kind of matters to you for some fucking reason, right? That's all that matters. You say, God, this really matters to me. I don't know why. But I think feeling smart probably unlocked a lot of feelings of being dumb I'm guessing and those feelings suck okay and kids can be brutal I didn't talk to him about this I don't know if this is true in his case but a lot of people the reason why you know they're not quote-unquote good in school not a quote-unquote smart you know I know for sure I was like that I didn't feel smart and it was really painful actually because that's what you're judged on in school (laughs) pretty much is their version of smart and I wasn't so good at their version of smart And when I was young and, uh, you know, I didn't stand out, you know, I wasn't a top student. And so if I would have been chosen for that math, that, you know, team competitive team, man, that, that would meant a lot. You know, I remember I was, I, my, my teacher praised me at reading when I was in fourth grade, same age. And, uh, so he gave a, he gave us a star for every book we read and we could put it on this board. And I read more books than anybody in the whole class. I read books voraciously and he let us read anything so i read tom hardy was it hardy boys books and everything i was interested in back then and the teacher was not into he wasn't like you have to read this you have to just read books just read books you know and i read the most i had the most stars by far in my class and it was because of those stupid stars you know yeah that was it i led the class in reading in fourth grade and i can't tell you how important that was here i am 57 years old i still remember back to how I felt, right? Because it was a reaction because I didn't get, you know, my sister was the one that was a good student. And you know how painful that is as a boy when your sister's like, she's smart and you're not? You know, the kid parents don't say it, but you you know, right? She got straight A's and they're praising her and then it's like, 
you know, you're getting, <laughs> you know, you got one B, oh, that's great, you know, good for you. You can read right through it, right? Even if they're trying, right? You're not stupid, right? And you're like, ah, I'm not doing good at this. I'm not good. I'm not. And then you start to beat yourself up and all that, right? So all those feelings probably were tied up in why this was important to him, okay? And the funny thing is, this guy is very smart and very interesting to talk to. So that's what's even more hilarious. And, and, you know, these things just don't mean anything in the scope of things, you know. I'm sure Elon Musk is not worried about what his teacher wrote on his report card in fourth grade. But at the same time, he very well could be. Okay, that's the funny thing. We just don't know. We just don't know. He Or something equally dumb, in other words. He's got something. Trust me. He was bullied. I trust me. He's got something that's equally emotional and gets under his skin. And he would talk about it, right? He talked about being bullied. And whenever someone mentions something like that, just like I heard this story, I know there's a big backstory that's not being told. Maybe they're not ready. Maybe they forgot it. Sometimes you actually forgot things, but you know, you just have a bad feeling about it. Uh, that's why it's good to have long-term friends. They can often fill you in. But don't you remember that? You didn't go to school for two weeks and you were crying. It's like, no, I wasn't. Yes, you were. I remember because then I came over. You know, and they, they, that well, long friends, long-term friends can be so valuable in uh, straightening up a man's memory of when he was young. If you do happen to have that, a long friend or someone just knows you, your brother, uh, these are valuable assets as you, as you, as you analyze these deep issues so that you can have an easy life. You're learning, you're learning how to be an outdoorsman so that every sport outdoors basically comes naturally or you're like, fuck it, I'll learn this thing fast. I'm good. You know, you got the, you got the lessons, right? And you know, you got confidence, right? That's what it gives you. It gives you fucking confidence, right? So, okay. So he felt smart. Next thing is, um, how would you handle it? Okay, so in a perfect world, uh, what I would do is go back to fourth grade in that meeting, and I would, I would uh, first I would take a break from that counselor because he's kind of bowling me over, and I feel that kind of overwhelmed. That's not, I'm not sharing my true self, and I'm not getting anywhere. But I would actually go into him again, just like I said. I, I would tell him that, and then I would come back in. I'd say I need a break. I need to think. I'll come back in when I'm ready to talk about this. When I figure it out. And I would say, here's what, here's what, here's the pieces I see as a possible way to lay down a boundary. Okay, right here, you know, this is very different than the boundary videos for women. It's just like, they're just like, stand up for yourself, girl, you know, do this ABC and you're good. Tell them this and you're worth it. You know, I'm, none of this. This stuff doesn't last. Okay, what I'm talking about gives you deep confidence and it makes you kind of a bull. You know, I'm telling you too, is one thing I was good at was setting down boundaries as a kid. I actually was very good at this. So I'm telling him from experience, not from l learning in a blog or learning as an adult. I was really good at laying down the boundaries for stuff like this. I don't know why I was a stubborn kid, but it came natural to me just to just, just not to do it. I just wouldn't do it. Right. It, and that's kind of step five. If you can't, if you can't convince or win the argument with the rabbi and the counselor, just I think you just say, hey, baby, I just ain't doing it. But don't do that first. Don't do that first. It's an opportunity. It's an opportunity for you and it's an opportunity for them to see what kind of man you are. You want to show them, no matter what age, what kind of man you are. And trust me, this, this is a good start right here. Okay, so what would I do? Hey, I would say exactly kind of what I said is, look, I appreciate what you said about Sandy Koufax. Uh, you know, that is awesome. I mean, people that will set down their selfish needs for others and be a leader, that's fucking awesome. Like, I think I think more of the guy since I heard that, you know. I think that's awesome. Okay, B, I would, so, so, so Sandy Koufax story, thanks for telling me. And actually, the Sandy Koufax story is exactly why I'm not going to do it. Let me explain why. Sandy deeply felt this. You know, this was his deep conviction. And he knew he had to do it. The, there's, there's a difference with me is because I don't feel that way. You know, I feel, actually, I feel the same strength of opinion, but about something else. Here's what it is. I've always felt dumb my whole life. And here I am. I'm fucking smart. And I'm in the math thing. And I'm going to win this math thing. And I'm going to do good. I'm going to do as good as I can. And I'm proving it to myself and the world and the universe and the stars and the cosmos beyond them. I'm gonna just gonna go in and do as good as I well as I can. And I'm gonna study. 
I make you proud. That's and, and, and I'm just like Sandy Koufax because you, you, I will do the thing that is very important. I'm going to impress young men with the ability to come back and to get over my weak points. And I'm also going to be a good Jew too because that leads to my second point. Here's what I'd say. Now you might not know this for sure, but trust me, it's always the case. People are always on a spectrum. Okay, so just take a risk with this one. I would say, look, I know you're saying this is black and white, but I guarantee you, I know a lot of people who are practicing Jews and they don't always do this thing this way. There are There is a spectrum of people who every time do it and they're very, very clear about it. People like the more religious, like the Hasidic Jews, they follow the letter of the law. Some people, you know, don't have a cell phone. They follow all the rules, right? some sex, you know, and uh, that's fine. And that's great. And then, but I also know that there's some businessmen who are awesome Jews and they do everything for the community and everybody looks up to them, but they actually don't always follow the letter of the law, these guys. So I'm in good company. I'm one of those guys. Those are the guys I respect the most is they, they do it. They, 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 they follow, they practice, but they also are very successful and, you know, they're, 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 they really have their own minds. You're kind of like what we're talking about in Running Man. It's like they are the independent thinker who shows respect. You know, and I would even say, look, I'm showing respect to you right now. I could have just been a crazy guy and not stop coming and not come back to talk to you because I'm afraid or, you know, just, you know, yelled at you or did school. But I didn't do that. I'm here talking to you man to man that I'm going to do this thing. And that's the way it is. And uh, the guy's going to give up. The guy's going to give up. If he's a good counselor, if he's a good rabbi, he's going to be, yeah, well, he might not say it, but he'll be like, yeah, it's true. There's very good Jews who also don't follow every little thing. And they make amends and they do it their way and they kick ass and everybody loves them because, you know, the, the, let's face it, like successful guys are, they're, they're very, they're, they're, they just keep their eye on the ball, right? And, and communities, every community needs those guys. You can't have a bunch of guys just, you know, you know, in Israel, I know I'm not Jewish myself, but I have tons, tons of Jewish friends. And I know I, I'm pretty sure that all, almost all Hasidic Jews get a salary from the government to kind of keep the religion, you know, that part of the religion alive so they don't have to work. And, you know, so they're getting benefits, some of those guys, you know, now I'm not saying they wouldn't do it either. I'm not no shade on them, but it's, hey, man. If somebody's getting money for something, it's important for you to know as a man. If somebody's just doing something out of the kindness of their heart or their deep feeling like, like Sandy Koufax, I mean, hey, good, good on them, right? But if somebody is getting any kind of benefit, I mean, you could argue social approval is benefit, but we're all not perfect. I mean, everybody's not perfect. And I'm not saying anything about uh, practicing or very strict uh, people either. Um, life is, uh, you know, I really want you to know that. I'm not saying that. It, there's all kinds of people in every situation and every family, right? But you do have to, as a man, you have to face up to the fact of the reality of different things, right? If somebody's getting paid, hey, that could influence them, right? It could. If that story is true, and I'm not sure it is, but if it is, hey, you know what I mean? Facts, right? Okay, so now let's say, let's look at the counselor and the rabbi now for a second. So you've said your piece. Now you're looking for their reaction. This is where you really learn boundaries is because in boundaries, in setting boundaries and, do, and, and, sh and demonstrating who you truly are and explaining it, you become a much, you really step up as a man. And that gives you a chance when you do that. Here's the cool thing. When you step up as a man, really step up. You know, someone's taunting you and you say, let's go, you know, let's go, man. I'm tired of this. Let's go. And now you have the opportunity for the other man to show his true self. You know, you say, I don't care about this easy that much, but you're going to taunt me. Let's go. If you're not going to shut up, let's fucking go. Put your, put your money where your mouth is, right? Obviously, I don't recommend saying that as a kid to a counselor. But what I'm saying is every man knows that scenario, okay? You got to be ready to make a decision, okay? So what now, now on this situation, you're not for future situations but now he's on the back foot you might be the first kid or the first man 
who didn't attack him didn't say, I'm quitting the church, I'm gonna, you're a scumbag, you know, or like, I'm just gonna do what I want, or start using the F word, or whatever, or just make some illogical, you know, thing, and then have him tear it apart, and like, have yourself torn apart, that's what happens, if you say something dumb, then he's got an opportunity to say, hey, what you just said is stupid, and you're gonna feel so bad, eventually you'll give in, right, but because you didn't do anything to be embarrassed of, and you did everything to be proud of, it's different now, you're sitting there totally comfortable and he's being called on something and he's being, you're stepping up and you're asking him, who are you as a man? Are you a bully? Like if he's bullying kids around, which adults do, then let him show himself. Yeah, let him be, let him be a bully. Let, like, listen very closely. You might even want to bring in your phone and secretly record this whole thing and, and hear your voice, hear yourself. This is so valuable later for you. Where you, where you went right, where you went wrong, highly recommend a big fan of recording your voice in these situations because you, your memory won't really, so, so, you know, it won't serve you well, but your, your, your recording, well, sometimes you'll just, it's just so gold too. It reinforces that you're doing this thing. You're no longer A, being pushed around or you're not being a prick. There's too many people today who just say, I'm not gonna do that. And they're just like, they, people have no class these days, you know, really. People don't wear appropriate clothes to restaurants or to temples or to, you know, places that, that demand it, you know? It's just showing respect. And like you are right now, you're showing respect to him. Now, I'm going to go on a different pattern when I talk about the fact that he actually was starting not to believe in his religion because that's an important point too. But right now for the point, he's 10 years old. He's really, I don't think it's a point to go on a 10 year. I don't think so. I think you're too young. I think you know a lot of things. But most men would not be ready. So I don't recommend going on that at 10. But let him talk. Just shut up. And if he just keeps saying something, now feel yourself inside. You're comfortable. You're like Steph Curry when he's all loosened up. You've got confidence. You can move around. You're smiling. You're jib-jabbing. You're doing your, you're doing your shimmy right inside. And uh, you know he's sitting there. And now you're watching him. So watch very closely. Respond appropriately. But uh, I'd say, A, remember you're a kid. 10-year-old kids, I don't think, you know, a lot of guys think that you can't be a bully when you're a kid. You can. Kids can bully adults. A lot of counselors, they just get bullied. And you see this in class all the time now, teachers being bullied by kids. It's terrible. It is not right. It is not right for the kids, especially. But the teachers, it just makes it a miserable job, you know. And it makes the teaching worse. It makes everything worse for the kids in the long run. I taught school for several years and can tell you it's very important to maintain order in a classroom in your own way. And I'm telling you how to do it as a nice guy. You are so nice through this whole thing, but you're devastating. You're like Steph Curry. You're, you're coming up and you're just like knife in the heart, knife in the heart, but not knife in the real heart, knife in the heart of any fake stuff and in the heart of your own weaknesses and illusions, and you're using this as an opportunity to come out a stronger man, okay? That's fucking gold, okay? So he shows himself. If he does show himself as a bully, I would just say something like, look, I, uh, I would not tell him he's a bully uh, yet. Okay, I would say, you know, I just, I've made a decision. Now, here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Because now you've gone through this. You've thought... And you're getting more decisive as you go in this argument. You know what I mean? You're getting more clear what you believe, right? And, uh, you know, I, you might say something like, um, use that confidence. Like, be in the moment and say, man, I'm feeling more confident now. I, I really feel my gut and it's good and I'm on a roll. Keep honest. Keep keep good. And you're doing it with the right way right here. You don't want to have any regrets. If he's being a bully, right? One of the worst things people do is somebody's a bully, somebody attacks you. And then what they do is they do something that they're embarrassed of later. That's the worst thing. If one thing I say, don't do that. You can always come back and talk to him about being a bully later. If you don't know what to say, and you can also never do it. So if you don't know what to say, and in this case, I would say definitely he didn't know what to say. Don't say anything. Just remember it. Just remember like I did, I stood up for myself. I was logical. I was respectful. And he started attacking me. And hey, man. That kind of thing can drive a guy farther away from the church because you just say, you tell your dad, hey, look, I talked to the minister, to the rabbi and, uh, you know, here's what I said, here's what he said. And you kind of test out people's humanity here, you know? Do they care about you or are they trying to funnel you into some ideology? And, uh, you know, a father 
a good father would be like, wow, son, you know, that's amazing. And you are right, son. There are different kinds of Jews. And I, I respect what you did and good for you. And I'm going to come to that math thing and you're going to, and anything you need, any help you need, I'm right there for you. Right. And if he doesn't, if he doesn't see, that's the thing again, by telling the story, it's like a lot of my stories. They put, they put people in the corner because I'm telling the truth at such a deep level that you can't hide behind things. You got to admit which side you're on, right? And you want your dad to be in that same situation because you want to know what kind of man is he? Is he behind you? Because you might find, here's what often happens is you find two bad things at once. And a lot of people don't want to know two bad things. They don't want to know any bad things. And that's why they don't stand up for themselves because they secretly know there's a lot of bad things. And then, and instead of, instead of stepping up and learning how to overcome these, these things that shouldn't have happened and are not right, they let themselves just get destroyed. But if your dad does, just you got to record it again and remember it and just think about it. Maybe it takes a couple years to think about it and think, do people care about around here about me around here? And believe me, here's the thing. Here's the fucking thing is you can't make a mistake on this one. You know if they care about you and they love you because sometimes people are wrong, but you know they love you and you're like, damn it. And in the end of the day, that's more important than being right on this issue. It is, man. As a man, your father loves you, even if he's totally wrong about this one. Even if you cave and quit the, the math club just because your dad and you just do whatever. It was all learning exercise. You learned so much and you did it for another reason. You might have done it to protect your dad or realizing that uh, he just don't want to go there because you kind of see a lot of things in your dad that you kind of put the piece together. And he's not the man that, you know what I mean? Like you just get some very deep shit. 10 years old, there's not time to talk about this, not time to go there. And even as an adult, I don't think you should go into this kind of conversation if you find the worst, okay, in your parents and they like literally don't care at all about how you feel or who you are. Don't, do not, this is where you change your strategy totally. This is where you go back into kid mode and just be like, oh, I was so confused. You know, like girls cry at the end of, you know, they're, when they're getting arrested or they get a speeding, you know, just go into a little kid mode and just say, or, or just go into like a very subservient role because you got the gold and now you're going to analyze it later. It doesn't matter what you say anymore. You just got to get out of the situation. So what I would say is, dad, you know, let me thank you very much. You know, I, you know, I know this and, you know, I'll think about it and I really appreciate it. You don't have, you still, even with your dad, you don't have to say right then. That's one of the golden things is that that is part of your right and boundaries is to not decide anything right now. You can even say, hey, look, dad, I, dad's like, we got to go. There's no time. Like, dad, I understand that. I don't want to be, I'm not being a pain in the ass. Give me one minute. Go into the bathroom. Let me think about this. I'm going to think about this. I need a minute. And, you know, take what you can, be respectful, and maybe you'll come up with it in that minute. And the more you do these things, the more you analyze these things in your life and other men's lives, the more you will be able to do that. You will be have the right thing to say. And like I say, one of the most important tools is to say, you know, thanks for telling me that. Really, you know, respect you as a man. It's all good. Let me think about this because I'm not sure how I feel. I haven't decided yet. Let me think about this. And you get out of it. And here's the thing. Here's I'll end on this is religion. So he, our protagonist, already had a feeling, or now as an adult, he thinks he, re, at that feeling, at that time, and he might be wrong. It's, it's actually when you're a kid, they remember he's not perfect. He thinks that he was already uh, deciding not to be a practicing Jew. But I would say, A, you're 10. You really are not sure about that day. I would have doubts on that one. You know who you are now, but as 10 years old, Believe it or not, you might have had some inklings, but your 10-year-old brain wasn't able to really nail them down, right? So probably it's not true. Probably your memory's playing tricks on you. Probably you decided later, and now you're backwards deciding. Because every time you think about a situation, your mind has to recreate it. That's the weirdest thing about minds. They're not like RAM. RAM memory, you access RAM memory. Each time you think of a story, your mind recreates it. They've proven this. It doesn't come from the same part of the brain. It comes from the creation when you look up to the, to the right when you're thinking. It comes from that part of the brain. You're, you're, you're thinking of the facts and then you're putting together the story again. And each time it changes. So just one example to prove it to you. If a friend betrays you, okay? So before he betrays you, like a childhood friend really betrays you, every time you talk about him, it's like, he's awesome, he's my best friend. But after he really screws you over, you will see your own brain do this in real time. You will start to say, yeah, he did this as a kid, but 
actually didn't really believe it. You're going to rewrite that story based on the new information. And that's okay. That's the way memory works. Okay, that's the way your brain works. So just understand that about your brain. It's the weirdest thing. But you naturally do that. And it's probably a protective mechanism. And it's probably good because you end up with the stories that are based on the wisdom that you know now. Right? You can't remember everything. So I'm guessing that's the way it is. But let's just say that he didn't. You're kind of too young. I would not. I don't really. I know a girl who went vegan at five and she's unhealthy now as an adult. You know, I think you just don't. You know, I'm not saying being vegan is not good. But I think she was too young to make that decision. I really do. I think. I, I personally, nobody knows, could be a terrible sin to even say this, but a lot of the health problems, I think, are back to not getting some vitamins that she needed when she was young. Because I knew her before five, and I knew her after. And uh, she just had a zest for life. She was just a fucking awesome, rambunctious kid, smiling and laughing and trying. And, uh, you know, I just I don't really want to go into the details of now, but uh, I wish that that true self was here because that made me so happy. She was one of the things that made me the happiest in my life. This girl, she was just like running around and she was just trying things and I'd show her to climb a tree. She did it without fear. One time I was standing there and she was behind me. She was on a desk. She was probably like two or something. And she jumped for me to catch her, but she was so young. She didn't know I didn't have eyes on the back of my head. She thought I could see everywhere. And I looked in, I swear to God, I cared about her so much. I looked in the person's eyes that I was looking at and I saw her jumping and I saw her reaction and I just whoosh, turned around and just got her before she ate crap on the floor. And it was because I, you know, oh, where was I going with that? Yeah, but that, 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 that taught me so much about how much she trusted me, how, how beautiful this kid was. She didn't have a lot of logic yet, but man, she had a lot of love and she had a lot to give. And uh, I really feel sad right now about a few things. And I think it's a lot of it's food. I just do. I could be wrong. Just, you know, shower me with whatever. But I, I believe that. I'm going to tell you what I believe. If you don't eat the vitamins, it affects everything. If you don't get the fish oil, if you don't get, especially as a young kid, I don't know, your brain, everything. Changes everything. You know, I, I think wait to do these things. So don't be careful. Be careful. Uh, but, but, you know, in retrospect, you might naturally start to have doubts about the religion because, you know, when you stood up and did a very manly thing, they all did a very dishonorable thing. Let's just say they do. I'm not saying they, they all do or they did or anything with any religion. I'm just saying you put the ball in their court and let's just say that they don't respond. Okay, that is gold for you because when you got it recorded, please record these things. You can hear it again. Sometimes you just don't want to hear it. That's why you need to record it. It might take five years to listen to it, but you go back and listen to it and you say, you could say, I'm wrong. I was wrong. I misjudged. Or, damn, I was right. Man, he was disrespectful, right? So there, there's some of the things, there's some of the, there's some of the ways that you can think uh, about setting a boundary. But you want to set the boundary based on rock-solid granite, okay? And that rock-solid granite is the type of analysis of what... A, what they're saying to you to try to convince you. You have to pick that apart. You know, you pick apart the Sandy Koufax. I'm not a, are you saying that I'm a, you know, World Series pitcher with a lot of people watching me? No, I'm not saying that. Okay, well, let's make that clear. I, there's no one watching me. Like, I'm not leading anybody right now. Okay. And maybe one or two friends. I am not leading the world here. This is not the 50s or whatever where everybody believes in stars completely and I'm a star on television. And, nope. Nope, this is a very different, this is a very private situation here. And it's very important to me. You know, he says, oh, I know, I know, but you still have to be like him. I am like him. See, you can even rebuttal. You say, I am like him. I am doing what I believe in, like him. I respect him even more. And I hope he would respect me. And I'm going to be, let's just say you, you fall on the path of believing the religion. You say, you know, this is, this is, I know there's people like me, like very successful businessmen, guys who, they made some sacrifices for a greater cause. I want to support the community. I want to build this, you know, uh, temple. I want to do this thing. I want to, uh, are they called temples? Uh, maybe, I don't know. Uh, but uh, whatever the house of worship. I want to help, the, I want to do something for the community. I want to have a food drive when I'm older. I'm going to kick ass. I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm going to be the rock in this, in this, in the culture because I'm like that. Yeah. 
And then he's like, well, you know, he'll think back and you say, you know, people are different, man. I'm like this. I respect it, but I ain't going to do it <laughs> because I'm going for my true self. And if God doesn't respect my true self, you know what I mean? You can even bring that up. He'll be like, oh, no, no, no. God respects and he forgives. Okay, well, let's get that clear. All right, good. All right, thanks. And I'll, you could even end it with saying, hey, I'll keep you up to date. I'm going to win this thing for the community. You could turn it around. For the kids that don't think they're smart, whether they're any religion, I'm going to show them that you can be smart and you can overcome things. And I'm going to do it in this thing. And even if you don't, even if you don't do well, because, you know, obviously it's hard to catch up if you're not good at math, but hey, you might, right? You might. And then you got a story. And if you didn't, it's like never give up the fight, fight of your life. Go back and watch that video of mine. It ain't, it ain't all about winning. Sometimes you're going to lose battles. You're going to lose. But people see the man you were for how you fought. Okay? That's what they always watch. Right now the NBA uh, Western Conference uh, Championships on. People are watching. What does Luca do after he gets the ball stolen? Does he come back on D? You know what I mean? Or does he? You know what I mean? They're watching that stuff. So what do you do after you lose? Right? How do you act to the fans, to yourself? Do you hold yourself in high regard? And if you do, they never forget that because it's not easy as everybody fucking knows, right? So anyway, there are some of the lessons. And I want you to put uh, in the comment section this time, times where you had a boundary challenge like this. And you can talk about this situation, but, uh, you know, keep in mind, I get a lot of comments, a very, I don't know. Yeah, some people, they, they, they hear a story and they think they heard the whole story, right? They're, you and you, you know. And, and, you know, I tell you, refrain from that stuff on these ones because there's probably more to the story. Just take what you got here. There's a lot here. It's like I gave you a lot of meat. There's a lot of meat on the bones here, right? There's enough, okay, to make a pretty good comment, right? So you can comment on his, his situation and you can comment on your situation. What did you learn from this, right? That's even better. What did you learn? If you have a helpful comment he could have done, damn, that I missed, throw that sucker in. I love that. Let's give him as many tools as he can from the community because you are awesome. So thanks for sharing. Yeah. Oh, okay. This is like very interesting. Nobody have a stamp like that. <laughs> well, I took them out. They were blank, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's like a vast stamp. Yeah.